Hello data pros, and welcome back to another interesting part of our Snowflake learning series. In our last video, we explored the concept of cloning and illustrated its functionality through easy-to-follow examples. Today, we're shifting our focus to secure data sharing and collaboration features offered by Snowflake. Let's jump right in. Snowflake users often require sharing data across different Snowflake accounts. This includes sharing data between accounts within the same organization, such as from sales to marketing teams, as well as sharing data with external organizations like suppliers or vendors. With its unique decoupled storage and compute architecture, Snowflake addresses these requirements more efficiently than any other data platform. When data is shared from one Snowflake account to another, the underlying data isn't physically copied, instead, sharing operates as a metadata operation. This feature securely grants consumers access to the micropartitions of shared objects in the provider account and only creates necessary metadata on the consumer Snowflake account's cloud services layer. When the consumer queries the shared data, they incur compute costs, but no additional storage charges are applied to their accounts. Snowflake data sharing operates on a provider and consumer model, and it's worth noting that the same Snowflake account can function as a provider for one dataset and as a consumer for another. Since no physical data movement is involved, setup is quick and easy. Shared data remains current, any updates made in the provider Snowflake account are immediately available to the consumer accounts. Providers have the flexibility to choose which accounts can access the data and can stop sharing at any time. We will set up a share in our demo shortly, but for now please be aware that a share is an account-level Snowflake object, that includes information about which tables or objects are shared, and which Snowflake accounts are authorized to access it. Consumer accounts accessing shared data have certain limitations. Consumer accounts get read-only access to shared data. They can view and query data but cannot modify it or create new objects in the shared database. However, using fully qualified names, they can join shared tables with their own tables. Cloning the shared database, schemas or tables is not allowed. Time travel is not available for the shared objects. Shared databases and their objects cannot be shared again with other accounts. Replicating shared databases isn't supported. Not all Snowflake objects can be shared, you can only share the following Snowflake objects, databases, tables, secure views, secure materialized views, and secure user-defined functions. By default, Snowflake sharing only works within the same region and within the same cloud provider. However, providers can set up additional Snowflake accounts and replicate the database manually, which will enable sharing across different regions or cloud providers. In such cases, providers are charged for data transfer and additional storage related to the replication. Let's explore the Snowflake UI and see sharing in action. To manage secure data sharing in your Snowflake account, navigate to Data Products and then Private Sharing. The Shared With You tab lists all the shares that other Snowflake accounts have shared with you. These two shares are defaulted and come from Snowflake. Shared by your account displays what you have shared with other Snowflake accounts. The Reader Account tab allows you to create and manage your Reader accounts, which we'll cover later. These actions can also be performed using SQL statements, which many organizations typically use, so let's proceed with the demo using SQL. Imagine that I'm on the provider's Snowflake account. I already have existing objects in my account that I'll share with another Snowflake account as part of this exercise. However, if you want to create objects and set up some data, please execute these commands. Once you set up some objects that can be shared, please switch to the account admin role. Next, create a share named product share using the following command. Then, proceed to grant the necessary privileges. Grant usage privileges on both the underlying database and schema. Grant select privileges only to specific objects you intend to share. Afterwards, alter the share we created above to add specific Snowflake accounts that you wish to grant access to. You should get this account identifier from your consumers. This is the easiest way to find out the account identifier. We've completed all necessary steps on the provider's end, now, let's switch to the consumer's Snowflake account. Assume we already have a database named SalesDB in the consumer account. 
In SalesDB, there is a sales table that only contains product ID, without additional product details such as name, category, etc. Let's explore how to retrieve this information using the shared database from the provider's account. At this point, when you execute show shares, you should see the new share. Copy the fully qualified name along with the owner's account details. Using these details, let's create a new database from the share we have been granted access to. Now, the consumer account can read the product data. Moreover, the consumer can join this shared data with their own database tables to gain even greater insights. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more advanced Snowflake features. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Thank you for watching.